So Dan just gave me this thing here. This is called a Magnesite Explorer. And what it is, is it's a magnification system. And the idea is you, uh, you put a television up on top here and display this. And then over here, this thing's got um, a zoom and a focus. And you put the thing you want to inspect down here. In my case, I want to start looking at uh, circuit boards that I do prototyping on. And so, on the back side, if you look around here, this thing has got a um, video video output. So that means it kind of runs at um, 480p. And I did hook up a video monitor to this thing, and it the uh, output from the video signal looks like crap but the optics look pretty good and the functionality of this is is going to be awesome but um, but that s that video back there is not that's not going to work out so what I'm going to do is I'm going to modernize this I have a Raspberry Pi 2 here and I bought one of these Raspberry Pi cameras for about twenty dollars so this thing right here is a five megapixel camera and it does 1080p. So what we can do with that is put this Raspberry Pi inside this box and we can take this lens off this camera and if we get the focal plane set correctly, um, we should be able to image everything on there so I have the Raspberry Pi camera working right now so we can like here's the screen so I'm going over there and I'm holding it up now so if I can get this pointed at me there we go there I am holding the camera <laughs> so inside of here let me show you what's inside of this thing it's pretty simple What's inside of this thing? Let me turn this thing off here. I'll plug it. So what it has is it has a regular, um, it's probably a video camera lens here that does focus and zoom, and uh, it's really simple. The actuation here, these shafts come in, and, and there's a rubber band that kind of turns these around. So when you turn the knob up in front, it just turns the lens. Here's the original camera that's in here. This is the 40p camera. This one does straight video and that comes over to this board. Now this thing does have some function features on it that you can do reverse video and you can also turn it to black and white. We can do all that in software though. It's got a power supply. It's actually got two power supplies. And up underneath here, it has some fluorescent lights. We'll have to see if those are going to stay or not. If they not, I'll replace those with LEDs. So I'll first see if the camera works and then my next project for this, I want to see how the quality looks. My next project, this thing is actually a translation stage in both X and Y. So you can move your part around. And what I'm thinking about doing is retrofitting this stage, these two stages here with old stepper motors out of scanners. So I want to find a couple scanners that have belt drives and actually retrofit this in so I can have automation control. The reason for that is if you're going to do board inspection these parts get to be kind of small and a lot of times it's, it's kind of hard to find the part on the board because like this one here these things aren't even numbered. They're not even, they don't have any registration on them so I don't know which one's R1, C1, you know, that kind of thing. So if you put this down on the board, you can take the the board file with the component location and then zero this thing out. And then using the Raspberry Pi over there, you can show the, the bomb file and actually step through the bomb while you're moving this around and doing part-by-part -part inspection where this thing will move. So this is kind of a little project I'm going to work on to help uh, kick up the quality of my boards that I design here.
Okay, well, as I made some progress, I've got the old camera out, and here's the attachment that the old camera used to screw into. And I'm, where else? let me see here. I've got it unscrewed from here, and I, I experiment a little bit. I put some electrician's tape on this thing so I wouldn't short it out. Um, so I can hold it around, and then I was fussing with the, the distance here. <clears throat> and I determined that I need to move in pretty far so I've was able to do that and so now I'm just figuring out the, the fixturing it may work out that I can just almost just use electrical tape to hold this thing in because it's so light so we'll see I'll show you some results here in just a few minutes Okay, so I fussed a little bit and uh, got the camera mounted in there. I just, I'm not proud of that mounting. I just super glued the electrical tape that I was using as insulation right to that frame. And it seems to be holding. We'll see how that goes. Here's the Raspberry Pi. And I got this Arduino board in the middle there. <clears throat> so, let's see if this is going to work. So here's the display at 1080p. It's quite large and this is zoomed all the way out so if you come in here you can see um, this is that uh, that's a resistor bank there 10k resistors so I can focus right there and then I can zoom in with the optics on this thing this is gonna be kind of tricky here Let's see if I can get this in the center here Go over here and look at this IC. The fluorescent lights that are powering this thing are really kind of crappy lighting for this. I'm going to put some LEDs in there and get this to tune it up a little bit. But you can see the solder joints. It looks a lot better. The camera is not really doing justice of taking photos of the of the monitor. But it looks really good. This is zoomed all the way in. Okay, so let me show you the. Um, the <laughs> let me show you how significant this is. So here is a really tiny, small screwdriver. This is kind of representative of the size of a soldering iron. Okay, so like here's my finger, and this is a soldering iron here. So I'm going to bring this in and try to solder some of those pins. Okay, so this is this is the width of the soldering iron you're seeing here let me zoom back out here so if I was soldering these pins you can see that uh, it takes up almost my whole on my whole television screen here so this is gonna work great no more um, binocular microscopes for me okay so I have my uh, what's it called a magnesite Explorer here that I've put the Raspberry Pi camera in this Raspberry Pi 2 and I'm, I'm running off this um, 1080p monitor right here, running over straight HDMI. So in the old days, in the, like uh, previous places I worked, I, I did surface mount work with a, a binocular microscope. You know, you, you got the things and you kind of look through there and you, you tune it up and you have to keep your eyes in there and you can't see where your hands are. So you get used to doing that kind of work and you find out that your hands are very precise and you can do very small type of work but i don't work there anymore and that's fine uh then the next thing uh, i bought i bought this little thing here this is a usb cam uh microscope and it's uh there's like like 200x i got this for about 30 dollars and so you, you can use this to do inspection work, but to do soldering, it's, it's really difficult because you got to figure out how to hold it. it doesn't, it's not mountable. And the focal length out here isn't very far, so you can't get this really off of your work. And then you also have to display it on a computer as well. So I used this for a while, but that, you know, <laughs> this thing, this is a luxury here. So... I'm going to show you some relative sizes of things. 
Um, if we pan back over here, these are these are representative sizes of what's in uh, circuitry today. It's called O12, um, uh, O12, 0206. This part right here. This guy's an 0805. These 0805s are really pretty easy to solder by hand without even any magnification at all. The the uh, 08 part is this distance here. The big the big distance that's two millimeters, and the small distance is 1.6 millimeters. This guy is an 0603. You can still do these without magnification, but you really got to have good eyesight. This is an 0402. These ones you cannot really do that very well. They look huge here because they're 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 magnified a lot. This is uh this is the microprocessor that's on this Arduino, and these guys these pins are pretty easy to solder. Here's my my representative solder iron. You can come in and see that you know even even this small one. This is a small tip soldering iron. It it's uh it's quite large, but you can you can put all these parts down. And uh, so let me uh, zoom in down to this little board here. This board has some 0402 parts on it. And so here's here's the 0402 part. And I'm going to get my, my tweezers in there. I'll go ahead and zoom in on this a little bit so you can kind of see how you'd really be working. You're going to work down at this level here. And so if you were to come in with your tweezers... Well, this thing is just kind of moving around a lot. You can actually pick this guy up, but it's kind of difficult to do. But you can do this work. Um, it's possible to do it. There's a flaw with this design. It's the lighting. If you look at the lights here, you can't really do inspection on this. Um, you, it's difficult to do inspection here because the, the reflection in the solder is is too bright right here. So I think I might have to do something with the, the lighting. Um, so what I had in the past was I had this uh, microscope uh, LED ring. You put this right around the bottom of the microscope. Turns out the frequency of these LEDs is really harsh. This is even worse than those fluorescent bulbs. So that's not going to work. I did get some uh, LED lights though. I uh, bought these strips. I bought a bunch of strips like this. These are actually on a piece of uh, double back tape, and these are these are individual pieces, so you can you can pull off six LEDs. These are really super bright LEDs, and kind of place those around. So what I plan on doing is putting putting a bunch of those underneath here, and then having a, um, a basically an intensity a dimmer for these guys, and fuss with. The intensity of these as well as the auto white balance and the uh, um, exposure on the Raspberry Pi camera. But I can kind of show you what the, the different lighting is going to be. I'll turn these guys on. I have these guys wired up here. These guys consume a lot less power. There's This is about 4 watts of power. I'm running at 9.5 volts at 500 milliamps. So I'm going to unplug the fluorescent lights here. And we can go on LEDs. And the beauty of these things is that depending on where you're going to be working, you can turn turn sections of them off and then get that reflection to be where you want it. Plus, you can also change the intensity of these LEDs. You can actually get this really bright and make it unusable, or you can make it quite usable. Now, when I take this out, it turns out the overhead lights in the, in the uh, garage here are also affecting this lighting. So... It is possible to do this. I did play with this and we'll be able to get this straightened out. So, it's quite exciting to be working with this kind of tool. It's going gonna, it's gonna to actually make it really easy for me to do uh, surface mount soldering. And it's all thanks to the Raspberry Pi and the Raspberry Pi camera.